my name is Obenda Welcome. welcome uh, please share the channel with your friends with your family with people who are interested in uh, in developing themselves in, in developing their businesses their finances and helping our continent to to expand and to grow my name is Obenda Ako. again um, I'm sharing with you restructuring your mind as an African restructuring restructuring your mind as a black person uh, sometimes we are talking with uh, our brothers and sisters outside the continent those in America in Caribbean in the Caribbean in England and uh, sometimes you see that those who show any 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 interest in the things that happen uh, to the con on the um, to African to the African continent to those in Africa uh, are those who have had better understanding of the situation those who have read the history those who have who, who are in some kind of engagement and I dare say that in all of us so long as you look like an African you there is some kind of interest that you have even if you even if you force yourself to deny it it's still there I remember uh, there was a time in England I met this Indian guy he was very dark darker than myself and when he looked at me he smiled he nodded his head and he passed several times we will meet him in the city area and he would just smile I never tried to talk to him of course I didn't know much <laughs> so, and I, I feel anytime that he saw us he, he behaved like he has he had seen a family member even though we were not talking and I hear that there are millions of Africans um, and they call them dividends in India all over the world wherever you go and you see an African they may not say anything especially in the west or in the east uh, they look like like you they look at you they nod they smile you wave at the majority of the people whether it's in America whether it's in England or anywhere that I've been they may not say anything but they know that you are in the same situation it is it is conscious effort to to try to uh, put your courage together to say that I'm an African and I'm proud of my continent what I know is that it takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of information proper information because if there are, there are any play, any people who are that much blessed, is us. The only thing is that people have intentionally systems, especially the Europeans and the Americans, they have intentionally uh, been told, they were told by their forebears to make sure that these Africans never, never uh, must, must accept that they are the least. And they must accept that they, 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 they are not intelligent. They must be poor. Uh, they must be prevented from, from, from having riches. If you go to anywhere, especially in America, every time that they started to become better, to become great, to build their own banks, to build their own businesses, to build their own institutions, they were attacked. They were destroyed. And they are constantly being attacked and being destroyed. Why? Because the idea is that the black man must be kept uh, at the bottom. So you see that uh, an offense that everybody will commit, that nothing will happen to them, we we'll, we'll look on TV and they are punished uh, to the highest degree just because they look black it's painful but with proper knowledge and proper understanding of how this world has been run uh, by this um, uh, especially white people who think that <laughs> they, they, they only deserve the best of life and nobody else must have access to the wealth and even the wealth on our continent they come for it they want to come for it and they they try to you know fight any institution any system anybody who works for the prosperity of the african for the for the dignity of the african for the for the enlightenment of the african for the for the, for the liberation of the african so you must understand this and work towards it because i know that most Guineans, though most nigerians those of us who were schooled here uh, through this structure the kind of education that we have in which is which is largely european and through the churches that we have established here uh, we seem to have some kind of um, love and and respect for the very system that has destroyed us and and a lot of the times if i'm talking to my friends who are engineers doctors professionals ma majority of them have no clue the structures that have been put in place the least the the, the 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 first thing that comes out of their of their mouth is you know our leaders are corrupt uh, they are they are they are their main problem they have no idea the structures that set and therefore they don't even know how we must come together to fight it because the systems will continue to work against us until we stand up to say enough is enough 
enough is enough if somebody continues to come to your house to bully you and you don't stand up against them and fight them even if they have to kill somebody you fought they know that there is a, there's a hindrance there's a there, there's an opposition another person starts to fight another person starts to fight a time will come they will give up a time will come they will slow down a time will come that there will be liberty but so long as we are not even sure we don't even know we deny it we deny its existence and we continue to blame ourselves for everything evil on the continent then we they will have their way out you know so we must stand up if you're an african living in the diaspora be interested in doing business in africa be interested in owning a land in africa be interested in owning a property open an organization in africa be interested in that because we are treated it's the same anyway if i go to uh, anywhere that is white and you meet me from from jamaica for instance we and we are moving around the first thing that they think about is these people are from africa without talking to us so that is the definition that we have and so we must know that this is our heritage and we have to uh, uh, take it up and make sure that it works and it doesn't matter the, the hindrances or the oppositions that you meet whether from individuals when you are here or those uh, institutions don't forget they are still under uh, colonial effect to, to a large extent and that's why when you go through town you will see uh, some of the things that you see the white Jesus that you will see uh, you will see officials who think that they must they must dress uh, in suit and tie to be called official <laughs> you know to be called standard to be welcome you know you must speak English to, to uh, say that whenever I hear somebody that English is official English is, is one of the languages that we speak we have other uh, several languages that we must be proud of and we must promote them up to date I do understand why we are not teaching uh, uh physics and chemistry and mathematics in p or any other of our languages why we must not i grew up in a, in a town where the english that they were teaching us the, my, my teacher uh, thank god he used p to teach us the english and that was fantastic and i remember even in the university uh communication 101 or something communication skills 101 the, the, the professor was using p to teach us and i think that was that was that was uh, impressive and if they were using the same thing to teach the 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 physics the chemistry the thermodynamics the the, the heat transfer you know the the fluid mechanics the all those courses that they taught us if they were using the p at least 50 percent would have been better because that will instill the confidence it will make us uh, be proud of what we have because the intention was to cut us from our heritage and from our heroes so whenever they are talking of innovation and prosperity you will see that they will, they will not mention anything that looked like an african it was intentional it was structured it was systemic the fight the, the victories that uh, are the major kingdoms in africa won they are not taught to us in school so how do you restructure your mind as an african know that everything that has been designed to put the african down was intentional and 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 systems have been set for the generations to continue to believe these lies and so long as we believe these lies uh, they will continue to have an advantage on us because then we will not have confidence in our own heritage so my name is Robin Darko. I'm talking about restructuring the mind of the African and the African I mean everywhere in the world that anybody considers himself or herself as an African and as a matter of fact everywhere the Africans live and thank God there is a technology now that we are connected there are so many people Africans in the diaspora who have never come to Africa who still talk to us and who want to know what is happening in Africa. My appeal is that you show respect, you show interest, you, you show positivity. The negatives, leave them for the CNN and the BBCs. But let's be focused on the positives. And what I mean by positive is that if you see problem, let's look at the solutions. Let's look at how do you solve this? Just talking about them and just uh, 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 blaming ourselves and just saying that we are nothing will not will not be positive. I think those are just negatives. We're just interested in feeding on the, the stereotypes. I remember somewhere whenever you see any any evil in their newspaper in England particularly, they will say, "Oh, a Nigerian man, oh, a Ghanaian man," you know. But when they do good things, they say that a British is <laughs> intentional. It's intentional it's constantly it, they are enforcing that constantly they may not even know that those things were designed and now they do them by default and they think that that is right so my name is Robin Darko. i'm talking about restructuring your mind as an african and so especially those of us who were born in ghana who have moved to live outside the continent with so much uh, even when people want to come to, to to ghana to nigeria we discourage them 
we don't know that it's not that you are being realistic you are just you are just you are just running with the tape with the thread that they have pushed on you and you may not even know it and so go for the knowledge go for understanding come visit come and when you come focus on the positive put focus on the things that are working because a lot of things are working people young people are building businesses uh, young people are, are doing great things in our country not everybody is is desperate to move out of uh, of ghana or of nigeria and as a matter of fact if you have enough information you will see that uh, this is where the game is <laughs> this is where the game is it's only when you're looking for food and shelter and that you think that you must run away but when you look at something that is bigger than yourself when you are looking at the lives that you can change the businesses that you can build the the you know the country that if you get into politics what you can do to shift things and create the prosperity and take charge of our gold of our diamond of our timber of our cocoa these things that we continue to uh, uh, talk and say that the chinese are this uh, the europeans are this what are you doing yourself we have to sacrifice for our children uh, for our children and for our children's children we have to be the ones we cannot look for comfort we must be the ones saying that enough is enough let's come home and do something and even if we don't win we would have sent a signal that is worth it we should not run just say that because of you know people said oh people will go because they want to eat listen you how many people are hungry looking for food to eat if you know what to do the problem is the is the information is the problem is the financial information the business information the problem is us believing that we are enough to cause the changes that we so desire wherever we are if you're a young man in africa in ghana and you are thinking of i'm tired here i want to it's a program that you're running because you've been told not to trust your people not to believe here you've been told uh, that this is poor uh, you know poor country you, those are attacks that they, const they constantly must tell us and and you can easily be a victim of those uh, of that propaganda and many of africans whether they are here or around the world have been victimized uh are victims of this uh european propaganda and they continue to sell those things uh in the religion you know focus on going to heaven don't be interested in the things that are here but they are taking the gold they are taking the oil they are taking the diamond i i feel that the gospel the christianity that a lot of us are in uh the gospel that as as is, is explained in africa is different from how as is explained to Africans, it's so much.